What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining. This is the weekly challenge, weekly challenge number 25. We are playing match points, and it is Wednesday, so we are on boards five and six here. And we see that our right-hand opponent has opened one club, and it is our choice to bid. And this is frustrating, folks. And the frustration we have is we, we know we have the best hand at the table, but even in a realistic situation, if we were playing real bridge, we would also know we are likely to have one of the better hands at the table, and we really can't make a call. The problem is we only have two diamonds, and the only call we could really make here is double. And double is just gonna have partner bidding diamonds pretty frequently, and a lot of you say, well, that's fine, I'll just correct to a major. But recognize, if we start with a double, right, and let's say, for argument's sake, it does go pass and partner bids a diamond, and then it goes past and it's back to us. Well, if we choose to bet a heart now, guess what we've shown? Well, we've shown four cards, or really we've shown five or more cards in the heart suit, but we've also shown 18 plus points, right? We, this is the power double, right? Doubling and then making on a call of your own afterwards. So that means that we can't double first because we're gonna have issues on the way back. So here we just have to pass. And just because you're passing, doesn't mean you won't have a chance to bid again later. But here we have to be disciplined. We're going to throw a pass in there. And now it goes a diamond, a heart. What would double be now? Uh, double is just cards here. So we'd like for them to find a major suit fit. That would be nice. And if not, guess what? We're going to defend one no trump. Right, we'll have a defense hand for our challenge. And I, I don't think there's anything else we want to do here. Right? We might, in fact, have a spade fit, but we might not. And also we know this hand is going to be kind of a split deck type of hand based on the auction we've seen and the fact that it's a best hand tournament. So here we may in fact be in our best spot for a plus score. So let's take a second before we do anything. This is what we talk about in our defense practice class all the time. We need to count all of the points before we do anything, right? Whenever we've seen, whenever we're playing defense, actually, we've always seen some sort of auction, right? So here we should know that East has between six and 10. So let's give them about eight points, right? So if we give them eight, we have, let's see, six, eight, 13. Again, best hand at the table. And dummy has 12. All right, so now we're going to get an idea of what partner is dealing with over there. And on this lay of the cards, if that's what West had, and trust me, West could have less or a little more than this as well, we should know partner has at least seven points or around seven. If West has more like nine or 10, North will have a little less. But if West has more towards their minimum, like six or seven, now North has more. So here, it looks like a pretty decent lead for us. Partner leads a low club. Now it's the robot. I would expect partner to have the jack here, but I'm just reticent to uh, unblock because there are four clubs in the dummy. And I don't trust my partner. <laughs> I don't trust the robot at all. So here, diamond lead, we're gonna play the eight and it goes lower to the king. Eight just for count. Wow, okay. So big piece of information here. Take a look at what just happened. As we're defending, we've discovered that partner shown out on the second round of diamonds, which means West, started with seven diamonds. Wow, All right, so they bid a diamond and then they clipped off a no trump. So here's what I expect over there. If they have seven diamonds, they also have probably like king X of spades or something like that for their one no trump bid. So here it is just a, nut, a, a nutty hand here. They're gonna play a bunch of diamonds and we're gonna have to decide what to throw away. Interesting that they're cashing the ace of hearts here because they're out of hearts and not, not too shocking actually. All right, so here we are now just going to protect our winners, right? Very crucial here. We know they're going to run diamonds. We need to protect cards that are vulnerable. Like, so if I had king small of spades, I would certainly be protecting spades. But here I'm just going to protect hearts, which I know are good. I know the king queen of clubs are good as well. And the ace of spades is a stopper for any extra tricks for declare. So no matter what happens, I'm just going to keep a certain number of these cards. And now we're home free, right? Now we have all winners to take. Unfortunately, the robot was able to <laughs> rip off nine on this hand. Unbelievable. I have to take a look at West here. Pretty, pretty ballsy, actually. And instead of, they didn't want to bid a spade here, which is interesting. I, I would bid a spade with this 
West player's hand for sure. And in fact, I would probably try to game force at some point. Uh, if I could find out, I could play three no. Weird that they're only playing one no. Unfortunately, like in a normal circumstance, I might think this is a gain for us. The problem is it's the same robots at the other table. So this is likely to be the same. The only difference could have been if, if my hand decides to overcall with a four card suit. And I don't do that and neither should you. That is not something you should put into your arsenal because uh, it is fraught with risk. And to be honest, it's more difficult to navigate for your partner when you're overcalling four card suits. So I don't do it. The robot might do it sometimes, but it's it's not a good position in my, my humble opinion. So let's jump on to this next one. Make your call, folks. What do you do with this hand? So you are absolutely supposed to open one no trump when you have 15 or 16 and a five card major. When you have a 17, especially a 17 that is as well put together as this hand, you're going to forego the no trump opening bid, not because of your shape, but because your hand is too strong for it. This is equivalent to 18, 19. This is what we're calling an upgrade, right? So when you have 17 and a good five card major, just open your major and then show 18, 19 balance. So this is two no trump. All right, and that's right around our range that we want to show anyway. Uh, the robot plays 17, 18, 18, 19 is the way we want to go there. Uh, three hearts, interesting, take a look. Three hearts is a spade raise, right? It looks like they're playing a transfer situation here. So we're just gonna go back and we're gonna bid spades. Partner's gonna bid three no trump and we are gonna guess as to what we want to play. Partner showing three spades and 10 to 12 points. What do you guys want to do? Make your call, remember it's match points. I'm bidding four spades. <laughs> Even though it's match points, I may get lucky and make the same number of tricks in no trump, which is true, but I'm not willing to gamble that away. And I don't think the robot will either. So I'm staying on par with them. And notice if we're right, we might get a little gain. If we're wrong though, we're always losing. And here I have a hand that plays well with suits. I have quick tricks. And my trump suit isn't the best as far as setting it up easily. I might have to lose one or two of these. So here, I think it's very, very safe to just kick it into four spades, knowing you have a fit. And this is another auction, guys, that it's so important that we check out what the heck the robot's doing, right? Because that three heart bid might have been a surprise. But once we click on it, boom, we kind of know what it is and we know how to navigate from there. So don't forget, it's not. it doesn't take a lot of time to do that. Way worth it. All right, so here are four spades. We love this contract. We're gonna just take a quick peek here. Diamond position was a little bit fraught with risk here, especially from, uh, it looks like partner would have played no trump, so it was at least safe as far as an opening lead, but was threatening to uh, the spade situation. If we lost a spade to west, we might've been able to come through that position. So here, we're just gonna play a low spade and we're gonna just take a safety play here. And what I mean by that, guys, is I, if spades are really breaking badly there, I, I will win that finesse and lose one less trick. And when they aren't breaking badly, I just lose a trick that I was always going to lose, right? So here I just am going to take, uh, going to try to take the rest. We're going to see if we can set up that heart over there. And we really want to pitch a diamond from uh, the south player's hand. And it doesn't look like, oh, yeah, we are going to be able to. I didn't notice they had pitched already. So there's our diamond pitch. Now we don't care where the heck the ace of diamonds was. In fact, we are hoping that East has it. Let's go East. No, too bad. <laughs> we're hoping East has it because we were able to pitch away our diamond. We didn't have to guess it. And we would win against uh, anybody that led a diamond towards the king. They would lose two tricks. But here, best we can do, we lost the ace of diamonds and a spade, making five. Not too shabby. All right, let's take a, just a little peek at that result and then we'll look forward to tomorrow. So again, guys, important to pick spades in this situation for the, the clear roughing value in diamonds, but also um, this is a, a type of position that gets played very well in a suit contract when you have quick rippers like that. The no trump contracts are, you know, I, I have to develop some extra tricks in a suit and then be able to pitch away some losers. Sure, that could be the case as well. And to be honest, maybe on a different lay of the cards, picking no trump is best. And to be honest, on this one, no trump on a diamond lead would be, let's see, we would get four hearts. 
Three clubs for seven, nine. We would get ten tricks in that situation if they if they defend well, right? Because we have to set up spades. We have to lose the spade trick at some point. All right, so there, that's four, seven, yeah, nine and ten on on the best day without losing a spade. And then when you lose a spade, you might just go down in that spot if it's uh, all, diamonds are already set up and maybe you've uh, uh unfortunately diamonds are four four so it's going to be four total but you notice you know, it's it's safer to play in a major even in a match point situation you might get lucky but looking for those situations is is not necessarily worth a ton of your time right just be safe get your game score and leave the rest of that garbage for people that are trying to gamble <laughs> all right so let's take a look at this hand that we're going to start off with on thursday wow interesting that it's very similar to the last time we saw so make your plan of an opening bid and we will check back with you tomorrow which is thursday and don't forget folks uh today wednesday is the live portion of the super quiz uh, <laughs> well that's a that's a big uh blow up of the screen there uh this is a fully contained complete guide to slam bidding that includes uh the as its last portion a live quiz class where you get to practice what you've learned in the self-contained lesson you're going to have a bunch of opportunities to bid slam hands and uh, whether you see this live or a year from now it'll still be available for purchase and it is a worthwhile course for anyone that's looking to learn and solidify their knowledge of slam bidding so hope to see you there and i know i'll see you back here tomorrow for thursday's fourth session of the week we'll see if we can climb back into contention here i think we've We've done okay in the last few boards. Board three, obviously a disaster, but we'll see if we can scrape together four good boards and a victory. See you then.